This is hydraulic mining 101, I guess you would call it. And we're going to show you what exactly was going on back in the 1800s when they were doing hydraulic mining and, and what exactly happened and what's left. And how you can tell the difference between uh, the ancient bedrock, um, the ancient gravels, and, and new tailings, which is what we're going to be going through right now. And then you have everything unnatural down here. Um, trees that have fallen off the sides. You can see the different layers in the in the tailings above us. Um, you know, it just pretty much shows. I mean, that it, it's just it's so loose and and fluffy. This is the difference between the the solid leads and the tailings. Is that the you're always going to see slough and dust on top of the tailings. Uh, you know, we're talking about the hydraulic mine. I thought I'd go ahead and show you the pit, or one of the pits and what you're looking for, you know, because they were looking for the blue gravel, um, the blue lead, which is what we have right here. Um, you notice it's not very blue at this point in time. That's because during the summer, and this is the end of summer, September, um, the, the gravel oxidizes and turns more of a brownish color. During the, during the spring, when there's water running down through here, this is almost a black. It's so it's such a dark blue. It's almost black, and it, what's, that's what makes it really distinguishable from everything else around you. And another thing you know that they're looking for, that they were looking for back in hydraulic days, is is you know the, the hard pack material, um, the blue clays. You know there was actually a, a a turquoise blue clay that was really good, but you know you're looking for the blue lead. Well, this is it right here. And I take my hammer, and put some glasses on here. And we'll show you just what they were trying to go through, you know, just to, why that why they had to use water, okay? Can you see that hitting? Yeah. And that's it. The material is just that hard. That's why they would come in here and they would drill it first then put their charges in here and blast it with dynamite down so it would break it up and pulverize it with a the dynamite. Then they'd come through with their, their 10 inch monitors and just beat it to death and beat it to death with the water and break it down to where you get the gold out of this material because it's so hard, you know, that even just hitting it like this, you know, it's not going to break apart. It needs to be blasted first. And this was a really good pit. This is a really good spot. There's plenty of gold down here. But how do you get to the gold, you know? Well, you're going to have to use explosives. And this is what they did back then in the hydraulic era. Another part about the, uh, this I want to show you is that, you know, of course, you got moss growing over it. So it's really hard to tell when the blue lead is there, especially during the summertime. If you want to go out and you want to find the blue gravels, you need to go out in the wintertime because the summertime is just not possible because it's totally red. You know, this particular spot right here is not red. You know, it is blue. But for the most part, everywhere you go to try and find a blue lead, it'll be completely and totally oxidized and turn red. This is a moist spot. There's still some water in here. And right here, this is bedrock. So I'm, I'm, I'm right here on bedrock right now. You know, the little waterfall drops off here, the little waterfall above me. Well, last time we were here was uh, September 9th. Uh, now it's April, and you can see we got a river flowing in here. And look how black everything is. Just like I told you, during the wintertime, it's the only time of the year you can see the blue gravels. But even still, though it's wintertime, you still need dynamite to blast it out. So that's why the old miners came in, the hydraulic miners. This is a hydraulic pit. They drilled into here. They blasted. They blew this whole wall up, what was in front of this. It came down in rubble, as you know, whatever it came down as, and they washed it with our hydraulic monitors. You know, they had the 10 inch that ran 16,000 gallons a minute down to a 2 inch. They had 2s, 3s, 4s, 6s, all but the 10 inch monitors. And the 10 inch monitors was a 10 inch solid wall of water coming out of there. Here's this piece of bedrock right here. The same one I showed you. We're in the same exact spot. We got water running down here now because it's springtime. Everything's black. So uh, this is just what I wanted to show you, the difference. Um, this is the blue lead, and it's all midnight blue. And this is where the good gold is, right here. I mean, good gold, uh, the average hydraulic miner was two to three cents a yard. You know, and can we make money off of that today? No. 
you couldn't even blast it and make money. There's all kinds of other ways that you can tell that you're in unnatural area, you know, or area that's been covered over by hydraulic tailings. And that is like, for instance, that pipe there, you know, it's approximately 25 feet down from the actual top of what's left of the tailings. And you have to understand the tailings in this canyon at one time right here were 200 feet over the top of where we are right now. And uh, when I started coming in here when I was a kid, um, it was that it was that it was that much farther up there. You know, you can see the little trees up in the background and stuff. And there's nothing down here as all growth. This is all all fresh growth within the last you know 50, 60 years. Once again, you can see the pipe up there in the right hand corner. And everything down here is new growth. Um, when I was coming down here as a child, you know, the gravels were maybe a hundred feet over the top of where we are right now. Okay, this is my mining partner, Jim Morrison, and I got him standing at specific spot so you can see the uh, the hand stacked wall just there off to his left off his left shoulder. Um, it used to be a lot more distinct all the way around him, off his right, off his left. And what I'm showing you this for is to let you see just how deep the tailings were left from the hydraulic mines. That entire wall that you're seeing behind him right now, that little bit off his left shoulder, a little bit off his right, um, continued on down to his right and it's underneath that slough. I, I know it's a hand stacked wall because I was here and, and saw it when it first opened up. It was a, quite a few years ago now. So everything that you're looking at here is, is not um, ancient gravels. These are these are tailings out of the hydraulic pits, and that that hand stacked wall is a good way to tell, you know, right on top of the bedrock. So they came down here, they dug it all out. They were stacking rocks up on top and getting the gold out of here before hydraulic came into play. And if you're looking up, you can see just how high it is to the top over the top of Jim. So you got, you know, approximately 40 feet up from him is where this tailing stops. And I know that these are tailings, number one, because uh, around 15 years ago, we used to drive in here, up there, up on top, way over the top of where Jim is. He, right now, 15 years ago or 10 years ago, would be approximately, you know, 40 feet underground at this point in time. And this is what's going on down here is, you know, it's Every year when we get the flood years, um, the hydraulic tailings get washed farther and farther downstream and it opens up the bedrock more and more, which is what we have going on here. So I wanted to show you that spot and that's one, one way you can tell that you're in um, tailings and not in the, the blue lead itself or, or in fresh virgin rock. Um, he can hit that with a shovel and it'll just come right down. You can see how loose that is compared to the other stuff that we just looked at. I mean, it's it's not it's not hard pack at all. This has been already dynamited and blasted and washed a quarter mile downstream from where the actual mine was. Well, back in the beginning for years, I didn't use a video camera, so I'm going to put some photos on here. Uh, this is from 2002. This is my old Ford Ranger. I used to always build my uh, dredges to fit on the back of the truck, so they always broke down and broke into pieces that fit on there just fine. This is my partner Tom and his son Mike sitting down. You can kind of see the wall, but we really didn't know what it was back then. This is uh, probably in June of 2002. Yeah, Mike, he was just incredible. You know, me, me and Tom, we would go ahead and try and pick up a boulder, the two of us, and couldn't do it. Mike would come along and just pick it up and say, where do you want it? And he'd carry it and put it wherever you wanted it to go. Take a look at the level of the falls right now and the water level, because right now when you're looking at it, it's going to be a whole lot different when you see it here towards the end. Uh, none of this is left, and I wanted to show you this so you get a real good idea of what's going on. Yeah, look at the level of falls right now. And that's Abraham and I. Well, we're down there working. And uh, we start out with high water. Then, you know, because we had limited water supply, we'd run the water out and just have to shut down. Tom and I would go ahead and start at the very top of the hole, and as the water level continued to drop, we'd work ourselves deeper down into the hole and just kind of follow the water level down until we ended up with basically nothing as far as water level at all.
which is what you're seeing right here. It just keeps working its way down. The floats aren't even floating. They're on dry ground now. Look at that box. I mean, it's just sitting there way above the water. And you can see Tom's, you know, working it on down. Now we're done. I mean, and the hose and the water in the box, everything worked fine all the way up to that point, even with it having the sluice box out of the water that far. And when it was dry and done, we'd shut down, let it fill back up, take about a half hour, take a break, and then we start back up again. And, you know, basically we were done when the foot valve started sucking air. And this is 2003. You can clearly see the wall now. This is the following year. Check out the falls. a little bit deeper now. Nice big old hole in here. This is a good swimming hole we had for a long time. And then we used this old corrugated roofing to stack our tailings wherever we wanted to go. We could turn it left or right or whatever. We put three or four pieces on at a time. We stuck our tailings all over the place. This is Sebastian Teakin and my son Abraham just kicking back having lunch. And here's Abraham doing the never-ending job when you're running in low water conditions. We are constantly shoveling tailings and moving them with the tailing stacker one way or the other. And here is Tom and Abe dredging. All the cobbles you see are all ones we stacked up there. And fortunately, finally, they all got blown out here a few years back. And then here's another shot of the hole when it was dry. I mean, that sluice box is completely and totally out of the water. You know, the Proline box worked fine. It worked really good. I was really happy with it the whole time we had it. I still have that dredge today. And it's the same dredge that you saw in my How to Build a Dredge movie, you know, with a, with a home-built box that I put into it. Great working dredge. And here is Arkansas Steve. My buddy came down from Arkansas with his keen dredge, and we tried it out, tried doing the same thing with it. We set it up in the same way that we used my Pro Line, and, you know, for the most part, it did okay. There's Steve right there. Uh, good people, still one of my best friends today. He comes out from Arkansas, and I have plans of going back there and doing some gold mine with him back there. And the keen worked okay. The only problem we had with it was the, the new power jet had that slip in metal and it just didn't seal right so once the metal came up out of the water it started sucking too much air and it started blowing the gold out so we just had to shut down earlier and let it fill back up again but we had a great time regardless and there's Steve working the hole with his cane and uh, boy he just had a great time down there you know we've been friends for many years and you know there's nothing I can say but you know it was one of my best friends Arkansas Steve Munson you know and I mean, we had some great times, and we're going to have some more great times even here, hopefully this year. Yeah, here's another shot of the falls. You can see that rock wall up there. It's actually in the sunshine. We were just starting to figure out just exactly what that rock wall was about this time, 2003, July. And then here we are in 2004, um, beginning of the year, and the sluice box actually had started uncovering itself, the old 1800 sluice box. We're going to go into that a little bit later and how it works and what we do with that. But uh, it was a heck of a find, and we got good gold out of here. Just like a regular sluice box, it has a V at the front um, to corral all the water down into the five-foot box, which was down below. And uh, this is how they worked back then, and this is how we're working today. And here's a picture of Jim and me working the hole. And we're still looking for the sluice box this time. We didn't realize exactly what we had and what we were on top of. And we were right on, on top of the sluice box at that time in 2004 and didn't even know it. And this is how we worked it. We had the two 9 horsepower pumps you can see right here. would pump the water into a hole that we dug with a 6 inch down below, back up into our hole up there at the sluice box. And that's when we started working the sluice box back then. Even before we even knew it was there, we were looking for it and going down for it. We didn't actually find it in 2004. And here's a picture of our tailing stacker. And look at that giant pile of tailings that's coming down. That's all tailings that we've moved with the dredge. So at the most, we had three pieces of roofing on there. As you can see in this picture, to stack our tailings from side to side, from wall to wall, we had as much roofing as we needed to go ahead and stack it wherever we want. Next picture is a picture of the old sluice box. We didn't even realize it was there back then, but we ended up finding it. And you know what? We're coming towards the end of the 15 minutes I can put on this one. So let me just sum up what we're going to be doing next and what you're going to see in the next videos. Basically, you're going to see uh, Jim and I cleaning out the sluice boxes, which uh, here a couple years ago, when it appeared. And this is him right here. And this is when the sluice box appeared. It's five feet wide. It had a whole bunch of wooden ripples in it. It had the, the metal bars going across it all. And now there's no trace that we were even there. The winter rains came in and uh, this last year and just washed everything away. There's no more sluice box, no more nothing. Not even a trace that we were there. We worked there for over 20 years. And now there's nothing but barren land. Already restored back to its pristine and natural ways before it was, before the hydraulic miners even came in. Hey, I hope you guys are looking forward to my next video. And you guys have a good one. There's those falls, and there's no sluice box, no nothing. I hear you.